is from Beauty. Amen. Welcome to Freedom Fire Mission Society. We're not live yet. Oh, we're live. We're live. I'm just fixing the comment. YouTube too? Yeah. Soon? Uh, we still have Zoom? Yeah. Welcome, everyone. Yeah. Welcome to Freedom Fire Mission Society uh, live service here in Surrey, British Columbia. And again, welcome to our online followers subscribers and at the same time our friends some of our gospel friends are here to join our recording uh we're gonna offer some songs to jesus christ our lord and savior and then we're gonna dive into the word god is so good god is in control may you have a blessed sunday today and thank you for listening may god bless you and touch your hearts lord we ask you to cleanse us forgive us Wash us with your blood. Forgive us our debts, our trespasses, our sins, our transgressions, our iniquities. And we ask the good news will spread to the world and that you will be glorified in our mission today as we worship the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Simple lang kanta natin. Bonjour, bonjour. Bonjour. Ang pagbigat yan, pagmamalem. Ganda umaga, magandang gabi, bayan. Let's forget about ourselves and magnify the Lord and worship Him. Let's forget about ourselves and magnify the Lord and worship Him. Let's forget about ourselves and magnify the Lord and worship Him. Oh, worship Him. Jesus Christ alone. Let's forget about ourselves and magnify the Lord and praise His name. Come on. Let's forget about ourselves and magnify the Lord and praise His name. Let's forget about ourselves and magnify the Lord and praise His name. Oh, praise his name, Jesus Christ alone. Let's forget about ourselves. Magnify the Lord is coming soon. Let's forget about ourselves. Magnify the Lord is coming soon. Let's forget about ourselves and magnify the Lord is coming soon. He is coming soon. Jesus Christ, all our rocket out. Let's forget about our and concentrate and concentrate on Him and worship Him. Let's forget about ourselves. Concentrate. Concentrate on Him and worship Him. Let's forget about ourselves and concentrate on Him and worship Him. Oh, worship Him. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let's forget about ourselves. And concentrate on him and worship him. Concentrate on the Lord. Let's forget about ourselves and concentrate on him and worship him. Let's forget about ourselves and concentrate on him and worship him. Oh, worship him. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let's forget about ourselves and concentrate on Him and worship Him. Let's forget about ourselves and concentrate on Him and worship Him. Let's forget about ourselves and concentrate on Him and worship Him. Jesus Christ, our Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We have the victory. 
in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, demons will have to flee. When we stand in the name of Jesus, tell me who can stand before us. In the mighty name of Jesus, we have to be victory. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we have to be to win. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, the must will have to win. When we stand in the name of Jesus, tell me who gets stand before us. In the mighty name of Jesus, we have to be to win. When we stand in the name of Jesus, tell me who can stand before us. What the mighty name of Jesus we have to be Come on, don't be hesitant to use the name of Jesus, okay? There's power in the name of Jesus. Pati yung aso gusto akong kagatin. Sa friends, mapasok ko sa employer. Sabi niya, daw ka tapos, in Jesus' name, you stop. Nag-freeze yung aso. Thank you, Lord. Aso lang yun, ha? Nag-freeze yan. It didn't move. Like that. Okay, so there's really power in the name of Jesus, okay? So, you're not going to be a friend. Are you ready? Sure, and then we'll learn worship now then to wake us up and to, to actually um, um, worship, praise and worship. Uh, we're plowing the fallow ground. Yung matigas na, di ba, pag ano, pinaplow sa, sa, sa field, yung matigas na soil. Okay, that's what we're doing with worship. Amen. Okay, we're, are you ready? Fasten your seatbelt. Are you ready, Mark? Yeah. Woo! Amen. Amen. Good morning. Everything is good? Yeah, everything is good. Praise the Lord. It's a beautiful Sunday again. The best day of the week. God is good. I was up at four. I don't know, but there are days when I get up early and I couldn't sleep anymore. So <laughs> what I do is just make coffee and pray. And this main floor is dark. So I just sit in one corner there, pray to God and drink my coffee. That's good. Amen. With Jesus, huh? Uh, we have time to pray. Yeah, that's good. Instead of sleeping. Amen. <laughs> Yeah, as you get old, sometimes your sleep is just six hours, sometimes five. Yeah. But sometimes there are times I get six, seven hours. Amen. Special shout out to everyone uh, Sister uh, Tess, Camilo, Pastor Raylanin, uh, Joanna, Sister Joanna, Carmen Sita in Philippines, uh, Pastor Tani, Sister. Pastora Virgi, uh, Pastora, Pastor Ton Kawa from Samar. Everyone out there, uh, Sister Dina in Calgary, thank you. If you're watching, uh, all those followers, thank you so much. And people that are here, I really appreciate it. Amen. You know, I, I really believe that the only reason why we are here is because of you. So you're special. Thank you, Lord. Amen. I can't really think of any reason why I am in BC and in this house. Thank you, Lord. Right? Okay. We, we don't care about, you know, what's happening outside. Right? Oh, thank uh, you, Lord. The only uh, ministry that has eternal value is our, our gathering here every Sunday. Everything else there is material, worldly. Amen? So... It, Thanks for coming. I really appreciate it. It's worth it. And Sister Divina was praying earlier about increasing prices. Amen. Actually, if you eat less, your problem is solved. <laughs> Maybe even good for your health. 
Okay. Don't buy too much pork. Just buy tofu and all your problems will be solved. <laughs> Amen. It's true. Everything out there is, I mean, we are, we're all in the same boat. But I just thought while you were praying, uh, you know, if, if God still wants us on this planet Earth, he will provide for us. Amen. If God still wants us to be around on this planet to finish our race, he will provide for us. Uh, of course, in heaven, there's no inflation, right? So we, we will never have the same issues, problems in heaven. But while we are here, God will provide and take care of us. Amen. And I hope you are becoming good stewards of your resources, not only your Resources, your money, your assets, so we can use it for the kingdom of God, but also your health. Okay? So last Sunday, I spoke about using the telephone too much. Actually, I just decided to cut down this week. Thank you. And I thank God I'm forced to. Uh, because for the last six years, I've been seeing a nice specialist every six months. That means I am on a watch list for possible suspected glaucoma uh, sufferer. So next appointment in December, I'm going to ask, because the doctors, they just check you and say, okay, I'm, I'm happy, it's stable, you go home. <laughs> ne on next month, I'm going to ask this question, have I been diagnosed? Do I have it already or I am a possible sufferer? Okay, Because if you already have glaucoma, without treatment, you can get blind in 10 to 15 years. Okay. And not only that, even with treatment, every any loss of peripheral vision cannot be restored. So that means your vision is getting narrower. Reversible. That's why I do the field test every six months, you know, the field test. So if so far, glory to God, we're praying six years, no change. But if you lose some edges, it cannot be restored. The worst scenario is you get blind. And I did some research. I'm a telephone addict too, cell phone addict, just like everyone. And I did a research. Too much light from your phone can, um, can accelerate the progression of glaucoma. So before, pampaantok yan, sang oras. Kahit magkaduling-duling ka na, magkasantok ka. But now, I keep my phone away because I don't want to get blind. Anyway, that's Sorry. just me. And there may be some of you out there with cataract, glaucoma, or in the same boat. You have to know it's a top priority for you because you don't want to get blind in your retirement, in your older years. They say most people get blind in one eye with glaucoma. So in the nursing home or wherever you are, you'll have one eye, one vision. Amen? You have to know that, right? So we'll go back to, you know, I study a lot of things. <laughs> That's just who I am. Then whatever I learn, I want to pass it on to you. Right? It's serious glaucoma. I thought I just had cataract, really. And then I asked myself, why am I doing the field test for six years? Ah, you're a suspect. Right? Ah. Anyway, let's go back to the word. Uh, we Part three of the series is Satan real. But today our title is what Jesus said about Satan, okay? We know Satan is real. Uh, we, we studied his origin. He was a fallen angel called Lucifer. Now, what did Jesus say about Satan, okay? Because the three years Jesus was here, he spoke uh, many times about Satan and his kingdom. So Satan must be real because Jesus spoke about him, amen? Amen. So let's ask the Lord to open our eyes. Open our eyes, Lord. We pray in Jesus' name. You are our provider, our healer. And I said, Lord, if you heal Gina of sciatica, you will heal my glaucoma if I already have it. The, there will be no progression, no loss of peripheral vision because I plan to drive until I'm eight years old. I don't want to lose my license. So Lord, help me to regulate Abusing my eyes. Avoid abusing my eyes with blue light. 
with digital strain. So I pray in Jesus' name, open our eyes now as we study your word. You're our healer, provider, savior, redeemer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> what did Jesus say about Satan? Matthew 13. Matthew 13. God is good. Let's read the parable of the wheat and the tares. Verse 24, Matthew 13, verse 24. Another parable Jesus said, The kingdom of God is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the grain had sprouted and produced a crop, then the tares also appeared. So the servants of the owner came and said to him, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have tares? He said to them, An enemy has done this. The servants said to him, Do you want us then to go and gather them up? But he said, no, lest while you are gathering up the tares, you also may uproot the wheat. You also uproot the wheat with them. Let, let both grow together until the harvest. And at that time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, first gather together the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them. But gather the wheat into the barn. So what is the meaning of this? Let's look at the meaning. Jesus gives the meaning in verse 37. He who sows the seed, the good seed, same chapter, Luke 13, 20, 37. He who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seeds are the sons of the kingdom, but the tares are the sons of the wicked one. Matthew, the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are the angels. Therefore, as the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of this age, the Son of Man will send out his angels and they will gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and those who practice lawlessness and will cast them into the furnace of fire. There will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. There, that's hell. Then the righteous shall shine forth as the son in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears, let him hear. Amen. Let's stop right there. So that's the, the interpretation of the parable. He who sows the good seed is the son of man. You know, Jesus, you know, this son of man, this is Jesus, the sower, right? The sower. Uh, that's the gospel. Jesus gave his life for us. And he sows good seed on this planet, right? What is the seed? I believe the seed is the word of God, the gospel. The field. Yung taniman. The field is the world. Okay? The good seeds are the sons of the kingdom. The good seeds, you know, the good seeds are the children of God. The believers, the saved. Oh. Of course, the, the word of God is also an illustration of seed, like the parable of the sower, right? So, of course, the, the gospel or the word of God is also 
a seed and it will produce other seeds like those who will be saved. The children of God are also seeds, right? So we are the seeds. The gospel and the believers, the Christians, born-again Christians are the seeds, the good seeds. The world is, the field is the world, okay? Now, who are the tares, okay? The tares are the children of Satan. Unbelievers is either your children of God or children of the devil. That's what 1 John says. It's either you're a child of God or a child of the devil, 1 John. The tares are the sons of the wicked one, Satan, the children of Satan. The enemy who sowed, who sowed the tares into this world? The enemy who sowed the tares, the bad people, the children of the devil. The enemy who sowed them in this world is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age. There will come a time when the harvest time will come. Remember, the illustration is a farm, a farm, a field. There is always a harvest time, right? When you sow good seeds, there will be a harvest time, right? So the harvest time is the end of the age. When the angels will come and gather all the wheat. Okay? The tares will also be gathered. But the tares will be burned in the fire at the end of this world, at the end of this age. But the wheat will be gathered to shine forth in the kingdom of their father. Okay, in verse 43, the righteous, they are the good tares. Sorry, the good seeds. The righteous, the good seeds, the wheat. The angels will harvest the wheat. They represent the righteous, the children of God, and they will shine forth in the kingdom of their father while the tares will be burnt in hell where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. So we are the wheat. We will be harvested for heaven, right? To be with our father in the kingdom of our father in all eternity, the wheat, while the tares will be gathered to by the angels. Who will gather? The angels. The angels will separate the wheat from the tares. The angels will cast the tares in the lake of fire. Now, there's a question here, you know. The, the caretaker of the field, right? Ask the owner the question. Uh, in the parable, you know, of course, there's the owner of the land and there's the caretaker. The caretaker asked this question, did we not plant good seeds? How come there are tares? Right? True, if you're planting palai and all of a sudden it's half-half, hybrid crops, 50% palai and 50% uh, what you call this, the uh, invasive the weed. plants, you know? You know the wild blueberries, the wild berries? They're very invasive. I actually pulled out one growing in that cypress tree in front, that whole wall of cypress tree. One wild berry grew up there. I had to dig it because it will spread. Okay, I had to dig it pull it out. I hated it because it has thorns. It has thorns. So you, you need to wear the gloves and you need to really use the right tool to dig it out right from the root because it's invasive. It will spread. So maybe you can say, well, the, the owner planted cypress trees in front. That's my fence. How come if I ignore that wild berry, it will be mixed. Then how come after 10 years, there's a lot of wild berries? Just like they grow everywhere, right? People, kids pick them up, right? And eat it raw. Yeah, how come there's, you know, we never planted those. That's, that's what the caretaker said. Where did the tears come from? Right? 
And so the owner said, well, in verse uh, 25, while men were sleeping, the enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and then went away. So who is that enemy who sowed the tares? Remember, the tares were sons of Satan, right? Children of Satan. So who planted them in this world? No other than Satan. Right? Mga anak sila ng Diablo. Mga Diablo ang nagtanim sa kanila dito sa lupa. And, uh, yeah, while men were sleeping, the enemy came. Maybe Eve was sleeping. And the, the serpent, the serpent, whispered. you know, made some little noises. Mga Pilipino, hilig dyan. Ano ka, sawa? Maybe the snake, whisper, you know, hissing sound and maybe Eve saw the snake while she was sleeping. Maybe she was sleeping. You know, while men slept, not, may not literally mean literal sleeping, while you are unguarded. Mm -hmm. Yeah. While you are unguarded. You know, naglalakad-lakad ka, nakita mo yung barkada mo, sinakay ka sa kotse, nagdurugang kayo. <laughs> Ganun yun eh. Galing ka sa, sa gym. Wow. Right? On your unguarded moment, you were caught, swept away by temptation because of evil men. Right? So this is what happened here. Uh, what in in while we were sleeping, that means we were unaware of what was happening. Oh, we didn't have a night guard or you know security. We were sleeping, and the enemy, like a thief sneaked in, right? And sowed tears, you know, seed, the seed of tears. <clears throat> Bad seed, not good seed. Yeah, of course, they, while they're growing, they look the same, right? And you're happy. Look at what, look at our harvest. Marami na harvest then, you know? Look at the field. It's full of you know, it's growing up. We're going to have a huge harvest. Of course, in the beginning, the wheat and the tares look similar together, right? Until, it's in the parable, until it, it the fruit, the crops, until it begin, begins to produce crops, okay? And then by its fruit, you can identify it, that it is not wheat, right? Did not Jesus say, that parable, you know, in the beginning they look the same until maybe it's another another parable. Until the time of harvest comes, you see different crops. Because by their fruits you shall know them. Right? And then you, the, the caretaker asks this question, who is responsible for this? Why are there tares? Why are there tares in the field? Well, it's because of Satan. So this is the work of Satan. I believe Jesus is giving us a picture of how Satan operates in this world. Right? So I've listed a few, you know, descriptions here. Satan is a saboteur. Saboteur. That means he he's, one of his expertise is sabotage. Sabotage, right? So he is a saboteur. He is expert in sabotage. You know, just like what the terrorists did in 9-11, right? 9-11. Uh, sabotage. And then they flew their planes to the Twin Tower buildings. And I, I think one of some of those pilots just Learn how to fly in the States. They enrolled in a flying school. 
right? And they took over the plane, right? And hit the building. Yeah. It's that that is what sabotage is, right? Uh yes, I guess you can call Satan. Last week I called Satan a narcissist, right? Uh, maybe you can call him a terrorist, you know. Or a thief in the night. A thief in the night. A, th a thief doesn't knock at your door. He sneaks in, breaks the window, and quietly, you know, you know, penetrates your house, right? Infiltrate your house quietly as possible, okay? So he's a terrorist, he's a thief, he's a saboteur. Uh, he is a stealthy bomber, you know, the, the su suicide bombers. Do they walk with bombs showing? In their bodies? No. They have thick jackets. Right? They have to hide their goods, their weapons. Right? So, and they're stealthy. They take the train. They look, they go to a concert where the people are, thousands of people, and then they detonate the bomb. So Satan is like a stealthy bomber, a terrorist, a saboteur. Uh, an undercover uh, operative, an undercover terrorist. He is stealthy. He's a predator, like a snake is a predator, right? A snake will quietly creep close to its victim and then suddenly strike you. Okay? So, yeah, sabotage is when, you know, we use this term when you are, you know, you know, undermining the government, right? Uh, like in the Philippines, right? You want to destabilize the government. The Philippine, the, the new president, you want to destabilize it. You're not gonna do it openly, right? Uh, there are ways you can weaken a president, a government, a leader. You have to work underground, undermining it. Sometimes uh, you can use computer hacking, right, to to weaken a country, like computer, you know, cyber warfare. You know, they say Russia is attacking other nations. You know, it's a cyber war. So if we lose all our cell phones, well, many people will be upset. You know, really angry, but maybe not me because. You know, I already learned that I have, if I have glaucoma, if that's confirmed, well, that's the end. Bye-bye. <laughs> I want to see in the next 10, 15 years. And, and I want to drive. Can you imagine driving, just having a tunnel vision? They won't let you drive. Mm -hmm. That's the end, right? Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. Saboteurs, they're going to knock down internet, you know, electrical lines, power grid. That's how Satan operates. Amen? Break I won't forget that term, Bantay Salakay. True, you're a mom, you're making coffee, you have no idea what's going on. <laughs> you're serving them, you're treating them well, and then all of a sudden, <laughs> sabotage. Right? That's a form of sabotage. Uh, well, things happen, you know. Accidents happen. What, what, what can we do? You know, uh, That saboteur will be your son-in-law, whether you like it or not. You just have to forgive. That's it. You forgive and forget and enjoy your apu. <laughs> and you don't boycott their marriage. You attend their we their wedding. Amen? <laughs> Para nakakaintindihan tayo. <laughs> Sounds familiar. Well, you know, I've, 30 years, I've seen a lot of satanic work in the church, to tell you honestly. I, we can spend two days here. I'm going to tell you all the stories. Because I know <laughs> Satan is at work. Satan is at work. 
behind the scenes. Yeah, behind the scenes, you know, and and very diabolical, you know, very diabolical how Satan operates. You know the breed of bird called cockatoo, the cockatoo bird. When they lay their eggs, very diabolical, but that's nature. That's how God created them. But it's a good illustration. You know how they lay their eggs? They lay their eggs in another bird's nest. <laughs> they don't make their own nest. They're lazy. They lay their eggs. They wait. They spy oh. and wait until the mother bird is gone. Somebody's nest, right? Until that nest mother bird is gone and then they infiltrate oh. they lay their eggs on a stranger's nest another bird another breed doesn't matter as long as they can lay their eggs and you know when the the, the, the true mother bird arrives he sees wow one egg looks different you know <laughs> one egg looks slightly larger and when the birds hatch, one of them is a little bit larger. Looks different. Larger. Imagine you have a child who is seven footer and then a four feet. <laughs> wow, what happened here? <laughs> who is your dad, you know? I'm going to bring you for DNA, you know? But anyway, and you know what that larger bird will do one day? Diabolical. That larger bird, that cockatoo chick, it will push. Even in its infancy, early days, it knows how to kill. Oh. Push it already way. knows how to commit murder. It will slowly push the other chicks out of the nest, oh. one by one. So you're a mom, you go home, one of your kids are missing, you know? Until the, the, the evil child is the, the, the only remaining. Everyone is gone. But anyway, because it's been pushed out of the nest. Because that, that diabolical cockatoo chick knows that I want all the food, you know. I'm the only child, so he's going to kick out everyone. And so, of course, the mother bird comes and treats this diabolical chick like their very own. Oh. Their very own child who murdered your true children. Oh. Of course, that bird will grow. By the time the mother chick is feeding that bird, that bird is bigger than its mom, you know? But the mom will faithfully feed that bird because it's her own. Diabolical. Mm -hmm. Ganyan magwork ang demonyo. Jesus. Ang sarap patayin. <laughs> Di ba? Can you say amen? Jesus. Yes. Cast it out in Jesus' name. Yeah. Well, I'm a teacher. I'm sorry for my words. I'm not in a pulpit where I have to speak smoothly. You know, I'm here to speak the truth. I'm not in a traditional church building. I'm here to speak the truth. Okay? So anyway, that when that cockatoo bird becomes independent, it will do the same evil scheme. It will lay eggs on another stranger bird. Stranger bird's nest. Well, yeah, I guess you can call Satan. Well, yeah, Satan can do all of the all of the above, you know, he can sabotage, he can be a terrorist, he can be a, an illegal sower, you know, sowing in somebody else, somebody else field, right? Planting in somebody else field, not his own. An illegal sower, a stealthy bomber, a terrorist, a cockatoo, an undercover operative. This is how Satan works. And the more we are unguarded, the more easier we become victims, you know? Yeah. People in church won't get this. This, this is, for some people, this is too deep. Don't, don't you know that Paul said in Corinthians, 
Listen to this. Ati test, makinig kayo dito, ha? This is what Paul said in 2 Corinthians, I believe chapter 5. This is a throw-in verse. I believe it's in 2 Corinthians 5. I'm not going to bring it there. If anyone who calls himself a brother or a sister who is an idolater, a fornicator, a gambler, right? Uh, a slanderer, right? So, slanderer, gambler, fornicator, adulterer, drunkard, slandering, you know. He calls himself a brother, and yet he's doing all these things. You know what Paul said? Do not even eat with such a person. Do you know there's high standards in the church? Okay. Then Paul said, put away. He says to the Corinthian church, put away that evil person from among you. That I believe that person is not truly saved. It's a tear. Of course, if you always drink coffee with that person, well, yeah, I believe you. I believe you. We'll be like him. I believe you. You're going to believe everything that person is saying. If that person is a saboteur, then you're one, you're also a saboteur. You're supporting their cause. If Satan sent that person, well, he just gained an ally. You are now an ally because Satan sold that person there. Now you are an ally, a friend. You belong to that camp now. That's that's how splits happen in churches. It begins with, well, because I believe. If Jesus said the field is the world, that includes churches. Yeah. The field is the world. The world can go to church. Unsaved people can go to church. Right? Unregenerate, religious, but not born again. Even if you say, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian, I have a Bible. That doesn't mean they are saved. Jesus said, beware of false prophets. We studied this last time, right? Beware of false prophets. Wolves in sheep's clothing. By their fruits, you will know them. So if they're up there, they cannot hide it. it you will see the fruit of, in their lives. If it's not wheat, you can tell. Because the fruit will reveal its true identity. So yeah, that's why Paul said, put away such evil person from among you. When you know today is a very dangerous day for the church. All over Canada and the United States. Because there are LBGT people in the church. Yeah. And there are uh, LBGT Christian churches. There's an LBGT gospel. We call this LBGT affirming gospel. That means they accept and affirm homosexuals. They believe they're part. God loves them. They're also Christians. We must accept them. We must embrace them. But I guess Trump will pluck out some of these stairs. Right? Lord. Praise God. <laughs> if you don't like uh, Trump, at least he will do something to protect the schools. Right? Because Satan planted in the schools the gospel of LBGT to teach your children. And then all of a sudden, when your children, when your daughter is 20 years old, mom, you know, this is who I am now. There's nothing you can do. Oh, no. And you kind of wonder, how did that begin, you know? 20 years I have known you to be straight. How come? Well, the enemy has done this. Because in kindergarten or grade one, somebody taught them the wrong doctrine. Yes, it's cool, yeah. That, you know, if you at age five, seven, eight, you think you're somebody that God did not create you, then that's okay. Hmm. You have the right to be who you want, right? The work of Satan. Yes, Jesus. Satanic. Yes. Amen. 
Satanic! YouTube will be angry at my message. Huh? Beta? 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 Metallic? Facebook. Facebook. Well, we still have to preach the truth. So this is how Satan operates. And in the churches, you know, did we not study last time? Paul said in, I believe, first, second, first Corinthians 10, or I think somewhere there, we, we came across this verse, right? Satan can pretend to be an angel of light. Remember that verse? He can pretend to be an angel of light. And then he also has false ministers. They knock on my door. Some of them attend church. Satan's false ministers, counterfeit leaders, Christians, they go to church. They cause divisions. They introduce false doctrines. They infiltrate the church. That's why many times in the Bible, you know, uh, in the New Testament, I think, you know, Peter or Paul, they warned that, you know, false teachings, false teachers will come from among you. I can show you all the verses just popping in my mind, right? I think Peter warned that false teachers will come from among you. I think Paul in the book of Acts or somewhere in the New Testament said the same thing. It will come from among you. Among you. It's in you. Inside your group. <laughs> and then we wonder, did, you know, did we not just study the gospel, you know? Did, was not pastor preaching the gospel for years? And you how come there's these people in church? They don't believe your gospel. Right? Yeah, one, one Filipino church got divided. The LBGT members left because they have a different gospel. The sad part about how the bro what broke my heart is the, the young adult leader took all the young people, all the youth with them and started their church somewhere else and they are now an LBGT church. And you wonder, why did that happen? You know, who is responsible for that? Who started that false gospel, that false church? Satan planted them. Right? It began with one or two people, and then it began to grow. That's how Satan weakens the church. I've seen it in 30 years. I, I can write a book and tell all my stories, you know. I can write a book. So, this parable... The parable of the wheat and the tares and how Satan works undercover is true. Jesus exposed Satan's tactics. Yes. It's the work of the enemy. But the good news is in the last day when the angels come on harvest day, they will gather all things that offend. It's right here. They will gather, the angels will gather out of God's kingdom all things that offend, verse 1. And those who practice wickedness. They will be burned in the lake of fire. So what can the church do to prevent this? Can you, can you uproot all these people? I believe, well, Jesus said, you know, in the parable, the owner said, let them grow together. Don't worry, let them grow together until the harvest comes. And then the angels will separate them. But sometimes God uses early divine intervention. Uh, every time there's a church split, I believe God allows that for good. Yes. Yes. Right? Because what I've noticed with church splits is the following Sunday, Quiet. it's all peaceful. Yes. Somehow... I sense the difference right away. I stepped in church. It was quiet. The, the, the spirits, the harassing spirits are no longer there. And it's going to be quiet for the next 10, 20 years. Yeah, that's what I noticed. So I asked myself, Lord, 
did you do that on purpose for the good of everyone? Maybe. But the ter these tears, although you cannot remove them from the world today, they can just transfer from one house to the next house. <laughs> just like your wild berry, they can transfer from... If they're not welcome in this house, they will grow in the next neighbor. Yeah. Right? If that neighbor poisons them, a person, they will just transfer to the next. Yeah. You cannot permanently uproot them until the angels, the, the end of the world, judgment day, where the righteous go to heaven and the wicked go to hell. The angel will separate them forever. But for now, they will always be in the church. Yeah. And you cannot just come to get to them and say, brother, I think you're a tear, you know. <laughs> I think you it will be good if uh, you, go. <laughs> you pray that God will lead you, you know. I love you, but, you know, you pray for God's will. Talaga man dito ka, dinala ni Lord, you know. Hindi sa pinapaalis kita, pero are you happy, you know. Because you can be... You know, we're not perfect here and we're afraid uh, of offending you. Maybe uh, there's a better church out there. <laughs> How you wish sometimes you can talk like that, right? The, the three snakes. Yeah, but sometimes you can't. You have to wait until an incident happens. <laughs> Pray right? <that> is... <laughs> remember, these people are good in hiding. These are like cockatoos. You know? Sometimes nga sa experience ko, gumagawa na ng kasamaan, minamahal ko pa eh. Pinapakain ko pa, kokato pala. Yeah, like the, the real kokato. Yeah. You know, you, the mother bird is very small and the kokato is larger. So how did that happen? <laughs> and the kokato, oh, you're a, you're a, what do you call those black birds? You're a crow. crow. <laughs> I'm gonna love my baby crow. Oh. And you don't look like a crow, you know, but you are my child. Oh. Yeah, I, I've done that, you know. I want as much as possible in 30 years, I've been nice to people, all kinds of people. My philosophy, if you do them good, love them, they will change. No. One thing I have learned is that tears are never saved. If they are never saved. No amount of loving and good work will make them good. Listen to this. It's on the record. Ate Tess, pakinggan mo mabuti. Ha? <laughs> Kahit mahalin natin sila ng mahalin, kung hindi sila saved at walang Holy Spirit sa kanila, nothing will change their lives. Yeah, that's right. They will always fulfill their mission because tears are sent to divide, to weaken the churches. Only someone like me who is learned and experienced, if I become a church expert and other churches invite me to, <laughs> like what people do in your yard, you know? <laughs> Can you do something with the weed, what, the, what you call this, the weeds? Oh yeah, I can do that, you know? I'm gonna give this sermon. And after that, I'm going to preach on born again. You must be born again to enter the kingdom of God. And if God uses me in that way, yeah, why not? I can speak. You know, a pastor who cannot, what a, uh, a church pastor cannot say, I can say. You know? isang araw lang naman ako doon eh, di ba? Sabi na ako, pabalikin ng mga membro, okay lang. I deliver the word of God. Amen. Diba? Yeah, I can do that ministry. No problem. Yeah. But you know, I, I have so much, you know, I have I have had, I'll tell you a story of three. I had a dream in the 90s. In the 90s, I had a, a dream when I was sleeping about three snakes. This, what, this happened when we were at the old uh, Seventh-day Adventist church. Maybe 19... I had that dream maybe in the mid-90s. Or 97, 98. And I saw 
three snakes trying to enter, you know, you know, the church door, there's a small gap, the main, the front door, and they're, they, they were able to squeeze under the gap. Church door. The front door. And one went to the left, one went to the right. There's three of them. And I clearly remember beheading two of them. <laughs> I behead, and one was still alive. And for many, many years, I did not know. Listen to this, at the test. <laughs> para ma enlighten ka. <laughs> What is the meaning of this? I, I beheaded two snakes, but the third one was still alive. I did not know the meaning of this until after 30 years, until I became an evangelist. And I said, glory to God, you fulfilled the dream. Just like here, you know, when Jesus gives a parable, People don't know what it means, and then he gives the interpretation. So in that dream, three snakes. I believe they represent, you know, first let me be clear, okay? At the test, let me be clear. <laughs> I'm just joking you. Our true enemy here is not flesh and blood. This is what Paul said in Ephesians. We are not so battling against flesh and blood but against Satan and his kingdom, right? But we know Satan can use counterfeit ministers pretending to be angels of light. Remember, he has workers. If he can trans in change into an angel of light, his human instruments can also pretend like ministers of righteousness. Paul mentioned that in Corinthians, right? I can show you all the verses. Some people will not agree with me, then let's debate this. I'm going to show you all the verses. I do apologetics, I debate, I make sure I have evidence to prove the point, right? Of course, if you're a there, you will disagree with me, yeah. right? If Satan sent you to destroy this, you will never agree with me because narcissists don't want being exposed, right? Yeah. They don't like that. They don't want being figured out because the moment they're figured out, they can no longer hide. Right? They can no longer hide. So anyway, the two snakes were beheaded. Just like what Israel said, we need to behead Iran, the head of the snake. Iran is the head of the snake. That's what Netanyahu said. That's why it has proxies. The Houthis, Hezbollah, Hamas, but Iran is the head of the snake. Well, bomb them, destroy their nuclear uh, reactors, right? That's the only way you can prevent them from becoming nuclear country. But anyway, I believe they represent, those snakes, those three snakes represent chaos division in the church. And the two snakes who died, well, that was fulfilled in 2001 and 2005. We know in 2001, some people left. They started a church. After three and a half years, they folded they started their church. After three and a half years, they folded. Folded, that means out of business. Sad to say, but I always am waiting when God will terminate me and retire me, but I can't. Don't you think I like to move already to Calgary? But I can't. Because someone is stopping me. Okay? I want to be honest with you. I did not choose this job. Okay? I have to finish my race until the last day. Amen. Right? And if it takes two years, three years, until the last day. So I don't think I'm a tear, you know? I did not choose this calling. But anyway, that church, they had a pastor. After three and a half years, they folded out of business. Second. Well, the second one, well, you remember this, 2005, a lady, pastora, well, they're still around, but it's fine, I can bless them. <laughs> Amen? Yes. Yeah. I can bless them, no problem. I'm just, well, a few people left, 
maybe 20 of them, but sometimes I thought, what if God wants those people out? <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> and then God will... Nandun yung nagsabi ng mantay sa lakay eh. Kasama. Sabi ka naman, kahit umiyak ka ng umiyak, pero sa mga loob mo, pero kung si Lord naman may control, if they're meant to go, what can I do, right? And we know, things happen for a reason, right? O, di nabasa niya na yung kalahati ng libro ko. Ipangatlo pa. Second. One third pa lang, marami pa. Yeah. Yeah, but, yeah, but you know what happened to that? That 20 people, they disbanded too. And now that lady pastor has entirely new members. So yeah. sometimes that happens, but they're still around, praise God. They're still preaching the gospel. Amen? Amen. Amen. Sometimes God, God will use splits too for a good reason, right? Yeah. Not all disagreements are bad, like Paul and Barnabas separate from each other. You know, they have the disagreement, Paul and Barnabas. So there are good disagreements that God ordains, but sometimes it's satanic, you know. Uh, when it's satanic, more people are hurt because the motive is malicious, right? Satan wants to kill, steal, and destroy. Uh, with Paul and Silas, no, it wasn't like that, right? <laughs> Amen. Because yeah. it was God, right? And now there's two missionary evangelists. Missionary teams. Instead of one, it became two. And there was a revival, right? Paul went with Silas. And, you know, I forgot. Paul and Silas, yeah. Paul went with, Silas went with uh, Barnabas. Anyway, they found their partners. They it became a, a two-team traveling different directions. Okay? So that's God ordained. Yeah, so yeah, we bless Pastor Eva. I have no problem with that. Amen. Did I mention it? Yeah, I blessed her to tell you honestly. God bless her. But anyway, the third one was during pandemic. Yeah. Third snake. The third snake. Uh, but there are many good outcomes, you know. Um, yes. I believe that snake, you know, that building will be demolished in 18 months, yeah. our old building. This group has been divided. We may not see each other until we die. That's fine. That's normal. It happens, right? Yeah, Facebook. Uh, it's a reality of life, you know. Uh, if you move to Calgary ahead of me, Gilbert, <laughs> we may not see you 10 years <laughs> until maybe somebody dies in this group and we may not see you again. It's a reality. It happens. So this group is gone. We may not see each other anymore. Uh, it's just a reality of life. I believe God also has a good purpose for that. The freedom fire will never rise again. It's now a mission society. Amen. We will never go back to a building. We're, we are a different format now. We are a house church. Thank you, Lord. We do missions to the Philippines. We still support our three churches, and God has called us to deliver the gospel to the world, Amen. right? So I hope many are hearing the gospel from me. Amen. So the third one, maybe God has a higher calling, because in 1989, uh, the prophecy I got is you are an evangelist to your own people. So maybe this is the fulfillment. Amen. Maybe if God doesn't allow that, do you think I would volunteer myself to leave the building? If we were all intact, it will be another five, ten years and everything will be the same. Right? Uh, maybe our agony will last another 10 years. Because, you know, I'm a cockatoo. I'm a mom who will love because it's my child. I don't care if you're a cockatoo. I will feed you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Cockatoo. Cockatoo. 
Yeah, I, I would love anyone. I would feed them the word of God, even though they're they're not happy, they're undermining, they're causing stress and suffering. Yeah, that's what I did. I loved a lot of negative people for 30 years. But what if God allowed COVID to happen, you know, bankruptcy, because he wants to convert it into something else? He wants to fulfill my final calling? If God said, I want to bring you to the elect, right? Because you've been feeding the wrong crowd, right? Wasting your life. Yeah, you've been feeding cockatoos. Well, I'm going to send you somewhere. Well, if that is not my idea, I never planned that. In fact, I would be willing to die as a martyr until the last day, even if I die of heart attack. If they just stayed and were happy and not complaining a lot and still supporting, yeah, we might move to a different building. <laughs> we're still together. But again, the agony is just, if God knows the sufferings are just extending another five, ten years, nothing is changing because as long as those people are there, they will fulfill their mission yeah. until you break down and die of heart attack. What if Satan wants to kill the pastor of heart attack by depressing you year after year after year after year? What if God said, well, that's not really my plan. I've already saved all the people I want to save in 30 years. We have preached the gospel to them. Now I'm going to send you somewhere else. If this is God's plan, Ate Tess, wala tayong magagawa. Siya ang nagsara ng building. Hindi tayo. Right? Right. And then sometimes Satan will whisper to me, uh, you're not happy. You grew, you grew po niyo ngayon. Malungkot yan. <laughs> you're in the wrong place. Hindi ka na dapat, that house church shouldn't be there anymore. It's not a happy group. It's just born by accident. And then you get depressed. You know? And you believe that. You know what's happening? Satan can do that too. Did God really say you should start a house church? <laughs> Just like Eve. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Just like how, how she tempted Eve. Yeah. Did God really call you for the house church? That, those people are not happy. <laughs> those people, the people eat the people. <laughs> and then Satan said, you know what? You, you see your chimney, pwede ka magbigti dyan. Huh? Jesus' name. Doesn't that, doesn't how, isn't that how Satan works? Yeah. But that will never happen to us. Because, you know, the Holy Spirit, you know? Amen. I think we're a happy band, bunch. We're a happy group. I believe. Amen. I think the gospel is spreading. I believe. I believe we have online followers. Amen. Uh, Sister Dina got saved. Christopher and Mark is attending. Thank you, Lord. We're not done. And you're growing because you're learning things I never spoke in the old to preach here. I'm sorry, the more you will learn. Amen. Amen. So God has a good purpose. Amen. And I want to bless all the people involved because they are not the true enemy. Even though they cost you a, heart, a heartache, they're not the true enemy. Satan, the enemy, sowed these things. Yeah. We battle against flesh, against Lord. Satan and his kingdom, not against flesh and bone, not against human beings. Amen. Yes. It's true. I believe sometimes Satan can use even a Christian. You're not reading your Bible. If you're carnal, Satan can use you. Right? Satan can use unregenerate religious people who are in church. Unsaved people, they are the tares. Yeah. Satan can use them. Oh. So that's how he operates. So the third snake is dead. So what's next? No more snakes. <laughs> Let's just turn this into a comedy. Does that mean we're going to have peace for the next five years? Well, we've been 
operating as a mission society for three years now, you know, two years in this house, Amen. one year in that building, you know. Yeah, well, I think we're happy, right? Are we happy? We're happy, right? Yeah, we're happy. So that's what what's important. I'm learning. I'm happy. You know, there's uh today. You know, let's another illustration. There can be a buffet in Abbotsford. I would rather eat here, sister. Libre. <laughs> I can drive. You know what I said? I can drive or pay thirty dollars and eat suicidal foods, right? Yeah, not healthy. Suicidal foods. Like last night, I was dizzy. I got scared because uh, am I gonna call the ambulance? You know, because we went to fire. You know? <laughs> I had that house special. And we had, we stretched here, and after that, I felt like dizzy, and my vision was like, I was like, and I went to bed early. Yeah, so it's just like you know, I would rather go to a small house where the food is great, Healthy. and I'm happy to eat in that house. Uh, it's homey. You know, wala yung mga busboy na may daladalang plato, you know? Wala yung mga waitress na minamadali ka. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, I know a restaurant, they're so busy. If you're done, their way of kicking you out is they will start banning the plates in their table. Then you just know you should leave now, you know? Because people are waiting outside, you know? Yeah. It's a bad restaurant, you know? Bad waiters. But in this house, we eat freely, right? Amen. So it's, in a church, what is the most important place to go is a place where you feel safe, comfortable, and you are served healthy foods. Amen. Right? Yung mga luto ni Divina, no? So cooking. Walang MSG na. Walang daya daya up. Yeah, that for me, if I want to go to learn, and you know, so the, the best place I found learning is the YouTube internet. That's how I learned my theology. That's how I, I became a five point Calvinist. That's how I learned how to debate. Uh, I did all my research for six years online. And John MacArthur is one of my teachers, right? Paul Washer, there's a lot of them, the RC Spro. And yeah, I, I, I love it because I'm focused with the word. I'm so focused with the word. Just me and my teacher online, right? So here you're focused, right? Yeah. You're so focused here, you're sitting in a, an expensive letter couch. <laughs> Eh, nung nag-asawa, uli si Raul, sabi naman sa akin, ayaw ka niya, ang palitang may hali. Eh, binenta sa akin. Pinalitan ko, ang tayo. Pati yung upuha kong green, ha. Pag nakikinig ako ng music, tsaka yung kapartner, o, di binili ko lahat. Mura lang. Right? You feel comfortable sitting on that couch? Because this is where you want to get fed. Amen. So if you're happy with what you're getting, yeah, I want to be in that place. So it's not about the building, not the programs, not the people who are there. Uh, we're a small family here. We're happy. That's what matters. Amen. Yes. And another advantage of a house church is sometimes I wonder how the tears can grow in this house. Jesus, man. Because remember, they are invasive. They have that capacity. But you know, I think it will be very hard for Satan to operate here. Because you know what? What uh, the tares want to do is to hide behind 10 people, you know? And then when they come to you, they will say, you know what? Sabi ni ganon, ganito daw eh. Sabi ni ganon, ganito daw eh. Sabi ni ganon, ganito daw. Pero siya yun. Right? 
Confusion. Yeah. Yes. Siya yun! Yeah. Uh, tatakutin ka para mamatay ka kagad sa heart attack. <laughs> Kau naman, di na makakatulog. Yeah. Gawin mo dito yun. Para dito si Duterte, no? <laughs> Gawin mo dito yun. Tingnan natin kung ubra. Jesus name. Amen? Well, it has advantages, the house church. Because it's a tighter circle, tighter small group, and it's going to be very hard for Pen Satan penetrate. to penetrate. Right? Because remember, they're good in hiding. Hiding behind the crowds. Sabi nga nila eh, yung isang lupa, sabi ng isang magsasaka, ang daming palaka sa lupa ko. Gabi-gabi, ang ingay. <laughs> Tapos, humulihin ko lahat yan. Tapos, wala siya makita, kahit isa. Yung pala, isa lang yung palaka. Mag-iingay. <laughs> Maingay lang. Parang ang dami, pero isang palaka lang. Oh. O, di inadobo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, makes sense. Palakang buhay. Di naadobo siya ngayon. So, sometimes, you know, Mag-iingay. Yeah. That's also satanic, you know. Uh, trying to pretend like there's many of us, you know, this is what the people want, but it's actually just one person. Yeah, but, you know, if you are a narcissist, a tear, if I want to do something malicious, I would be picky with what I want to destroy. Right? Amen. That's why the, the terrorist bombers, they go to the crowds. They blend subways, concerts. Oh. They're not gonna come here where there's only 10 people, you know? Well, they want to kill more. That's it. More damage, the better. So if I'm a malicious person, I want to do my damage the most, you know, explosive that will kill many, many more people. Like a sport, a boxing, a boxing event or sports. Hockey, yeah, I go buy my ticket and then I blow myself in the middle, right? You don't go into a house and blow up people that are serious. They will spot you easily, right? They will say, ano naman yung bag mo? <laughs> Bible ba yan? Pwede patay na, eh, bomba lang ano eh. Right? It's very, gonna be very hard to operate in this house. In a house church, in my opinion. Plus, I believe those snakes are headless now. Powerless. They're done. Never to be repeated again. All fulfilled. The three snakes were all fulfilled. And sometimes I used to think the third snake seems to be like three-headed monster. You know? Yeah. Tatlo ulo. Powerful. One snake, but tatlo ulo. Sometimes I used to think like that. Uh, but I'm glad, you know, if they are saved, may God bless them. You know, God will use them, maybe bring them to another church. But if they are not saved, that's my greatest fear. If they are not saved, if they're just religious, marami pang ma-deceived. Nakakatakot yun eh. Because if a tear is not born again, he can deceive more people. Right? This is going to be more destructive. But if a tear is just a, a sinning carnal Christian, there's hope for repentance. That I will repent one day. I've learned from what I've done and I will repent one day. But if it's not saved, then rem remember, at the, at the harvest day, the angels will gather all things that offend and they will be burned in the lake of fire so that's why i always emphasize if you want to enter the kingdom of god jesus said you must be born again the thing is if we make a survey of 1000 people who went to our church in 30 years maybe the born again are just 100 or 200 we have seen a lot of people in 30 years, you know, 
especially in uh, Vancouver, you know, the old building there, we were close to the airport. So new arrivals of people from the Philippines, they need a base, a social group, and they find us. And they say, ang ganda dito, saan ang pagkain? And maganda naman ang teaching about God. The question is, are you repenting? Do you do you realize that you were born a sinner and you need to get saved? They don't realize that. And they just stay there for months, weeks, until pagsawana sila, they go because they never been saved in the first place. Yeah, yeah sometimes they become LBGTs. A few of them became LBGTs. Then we will just hear they have a living partner. And I said, wow, did they? I asked myself, did that sister really got saved during the time she was here for six months? Because some many of these people just need, as a new immigrant, people look for community. Right? Network. Not for salvation, community. They're not saved. I don't know. There's there's uh there is one lady here who is a Christian. She said she's a Christian. Actually, she sang in our worship team as backup. And then she had an argument with another brother about a car. And then um, you know, I think she gave the brother the car and then was trying to retrieve it back. And when the brother did not return the car, because she already transferred the ownership, right? She really got mad, and she sent me a letter. A letter. Pinagmumumura niya yung brother. Sabi ko, malutong na ano to ah. Namura to ah. Ang problema, tinapong ko yung sulat. Dapat pala nilagay ko sa museum. It's a bad letter. Every time I remember that letter, I ask myself, will a born-again Christian do that? Mm -hmm. Say, I don't like what the people did in the past, right? And I'm still angry. What if I wrote a letter and first, sana mamatay ka na. Sana tamahan ka ng kidlat. Tapos lahat ng mura, no? Tapos minail ko pa. Pinadala ko dun sa mga nagkos na if you're really born again, you have the Spirit of God, can you do that? Can you do that? No. That's what separates us. Ate Tess, pakinggan nyo to, ha? Biro lang po. That is what separates the saved. 